Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good in our community, and also, too, having some fun talking about classic cars, exotic cars, auctions, and so much more. We're here with Stephen Mancuso. He is a motor specialist with Bottoms. And let's start out. Stephen, how are you doing? Good, man. Good to see you. Absolutely. So let's dive in before we start talking about Bonhams and all the amazing work that you do there. Give us a little bit of your story in terms of how you got into working as an auctioneer, a motor specialist, working with Bonhams. How, how did you get into this world? Yeah, so uh, I was a commercial insurance agent for um, Regions Insurance, which later became McGriff. And, uh, and I, I had a specialty in that I represented Haggerty Classic Car Insurance. And uh, one of the better known classic car insurance groups. And one of my clients was the Tupelo Automobile Museum. And so during one of our regular conversations, I, I asked this lady who was in her early 60s, good health, has homes all over the world and wanted to spend more time in them. I said, you know, what are you doing here, Jane? And she says, well, I'd really like to sell this place. And I want to sell it to Jay Leno. And I said, well, OK, let's do that. And she looked at me like I had three heads, but um, I, I ended up, you know, snapping some quick pictures of cars. And and when you have things like a Tucker and a Duesenberg, um, it makes a lot of doors open up. So we put a proposal together, sent it out to him. And a few days later, he gave me a call back and said, you know, he wanted to have five cars out of this collection of 200. And I said, well, that's not going to work. So we um, we ended up moving on and, and I worked with uh, a guy named Wayne Carini out of, uh, um, out of Connecticut. He actually has a TV show called Chasing Classic Cars. We filmed the whole, uh, the whole process of us uh, coming in and assessing the collection. Um, and then we, uh, we interviewed three auction houses, picked one, which ended up being Bonhams ultimately. And, um, and we put a plan together that um, I thought I had 18 months. We did it in nine. And it was a what's called a clean sweep, where by the time it's all said and done, we sweep the floors clean. There's nothing left in the building. And so we did that. And through that process, Bonhams hired me or offered me a position there. And I joined shortly after the auction. But, um, but we did a live auction worldwide with uh, something to the tune of about 5,000 uh, bidders in the, in the room and on the, on the Internet and on the phone. And uh, brought in over $10 million in proceeds for Jane's charity, which uh, she ultimately gave away. So uh, it was really a great experience. And that's how I got to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a cool local story, too, in terms of the Mid-South. Talk about Bonhams overall, very storied legacy. So give us a little bit of history on Bonhams. Founded in uh, 1793 um, out of the UK and uh, still that's where our, our global headquarters are there now. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, being the auction, oldest auction house, we, we work in many different areas where, you know, we, we specialize in things like jewelry and fine arts. Um, the, uh, the motor cars are just a small piece of a lot of the different, uh, things that we have to offer. So, you know, we recently had a Western art, um, deal, uh, auction where we were selling some rare guns and, and memorabilia from the old West and, uh, we sold a, a world record setting, um, the handgun that killed Billy the Kid, uh, owned by Pat Garrett, uh, or, or recovered by Pat Garrett, um, sold for just over five million dollars. So it's the we do a little bit of of many things, and uh, we have great divisions that that have lots of ability to help customers in many different ways. Miss Spain, who owned the the Tupelo Automobile Museum, also had a very fond collection of uh, of world maps. So we recently had uh, one of our map specialists within Bottoms come in, do a full appraisal of her 4,000 maps, and uh, we're set to take those to auction in October. So uh, well, that's, that's the hope anyway. Yeah. Walk us through how the auction process works. For those who have never you know, been a part of it, do some education on you know, how many, because you mentioned there's in-person, there's online, you know, so the ramp up, t talk about the process overall. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people have gotten at least an, an idea of what, of what that looks like because of things like Barrett Jackson and, and uh, you'll see Meekham auctions on TV sometimes and you hear the guy, you know, 
rambling on and hard to, hard to keep up with what he's saying. And, and, and that is one setting of an auction um, where, you know, it's a bit of a bit of a bit and you, and you can't understand anything that he's saying and it goes really quick. That is not typically what it looks like in a bottoms auction. Um, like I said, we're founded in 1793 and uh, run by a bunch of Englishmen. So it's a little more proper and slow and gentlemanlike. Um, which is great for me because I'm from the South and, and I need slowness. Sometimes I can't keep up, but, um, but we do specialize in higher end cars. So that's, that's one of the things that, that people, you know, have, have will expect at a, at a Bonham's auction versus some of the other auction houses. But what the process looks like is essentially if you have a car in your garage and you want to sell it, uh, you've got a lot of opportunities for it, especially these days. You can sell it online um, with a Bonhams auction house or with bring a trailer and eBay and all these other areas. Um, and sometimes the car never leaves your driveway, which is one way to do it. Um, in, in a live auction setting, what you get though is, is everything. You get the online presence, uh, you get worldwide um, promotion for it, but you're also getting a live audience sitting in front of it, being fed alcohol, which is always a helpful thing when it comes to spending money, um, allows us all to make bad decisions at times. Um, but uh, but it's a, there's an excitement that's hard to really explain. You can't bottle it, it, you can't explain it really. There's a thing that happens when you see a car in front of you and your hand gets to go in the air and they're calling your name for that car. Um, but the auction process is, is much more complicated than people initially think. It's not as easy as I want to sell my car. I'm going to sell it here. You have to be, uh, it has to be appraised. It has to be um, looked at by a specialist like myself. And essentially we work with our, the rest of our team to decide whether or not that car makes good sense in one, a bottom sale or two in, you know, where we're going to put it in, you know, which sale out of the country we're going to do. And, um, we try to keep um, the best of the best for our premium sales. So, um, so there are times where we say, you know what, this is not the best fit. We're not the best fit for this particular car. And, and we're always, you know, I, I like to think that we're always helpful in helping any customer with any valued car find the right place. My job is to, is to be, uh, it's customer service. And so, you know, whether I have an opportunity to sell your car or not, um, I really want to be helpful in that process because there's very few people in, certainly in the Memphis area or Nashville area that, um, that are here on site that can come in and say, this is what I can do, or this is what you should do. Um, we've got a lot of experience with, with guiding people in the right direction with that. So. So sometimes it's a, it's a lot of bad news where people think they've got a very expensive car and, and I have to show them that, you know, look, this is something that's a little more common than you think. And, um, but each auction house is different. There are fees involved with each auction house. So when you decide you're going to bring a car to sale, it's going to, um, there's going to be fees involved. Uh, the auction house will charge you a fee to sell it, uh, a fee to market it. Uh, if you're buying a car, there's a buyer's fee that you always need to be aware of and sales tax. And then there's the wonderful thing called transportation, which people often forget, but you actually have to pay you to get your car sent to auction. And then if you don't sell it, you have to bring it home, uh, whether you had a reserve on it or it's a no reserve car that didn't sell, which does happen. Uh, you have to pay to get a car back. So there's a, there's always, um, there's a lot of things that people tend to forget about. So um, you have to be very careful when you're planning to sell your car and how you're going to do it. But an auction is often the most exciting and most profitable way to do it at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, and knowing that you, especially for here being local, that you can walk through and educate someone so that they know what they're getting into. They know the risk versus reward. And like you said, there is a big reward, but you have to know, okay, here's all the, here's all the things you need to know so that you're educated and you're not surprised. And I think that's the key, especially for those who are new to the game of auctions and live auctions and what all this means, especially with cars. You know, and, and what I try to tell people is, is before you really jump in with both feet in a, in an auction setting, you should go. You go to one. They're, they're happening all over the country. Almost every month, there's a live auction somewhere. 
Um, and most of the time I can find one that's somewhat reasonable drive distance for, for people if they don't want to get into an airplane. But, um, but you can always watch them online. And what that typically will do is, is raise questions that you didn't even know to ask. Um, you know, there's, there's things that happen in auction that are, if you're, if you're watching every penny when it comes to selling your car, um, sometimes the auction might not be the right place for you. Uh, or at least one of our large auction houses might not be the place for you. I, I had a very good friend of mine that um, wanted to take his car to Barrett Jackson before I was involved in this really uh, more than just playing with it. And um, we took it to, to sale and he, he was completely blindsided by all the fees. He didn't realize that, you know, on top of everything, he was going to have to pay income tax after it was all said and done. So it really, it really shocked him the whole process and how little, he ended up coming home with after he was just unprepared for it um, and brought the car to a wrong, to the wrong auction. So it's very important that you spend a lot of time with your specialist and really have an understanding of what to expect and, and, and make sure that your car is in the right hands. Yeah. Because so often people make mistakes because a specialist really needs to have a car somewhere and they push them in a direction that they probably shouldn't go. Great advice. What are some of the, the recent favorites on your end in terms of being able to, to work with some of the cars? So tease us a little bit uh, as much as we can through the audio and, and not having all the pictures, but what are some of your favorite recent cars? So uh, I have the greatest job on the planet for anybody that likes cars. Uh, I was the kid with the Matchbox car collection and the posters on the wall. I still got them. Um, so I had uh, I recently had to go out to Monterey, California for nine days for our big auction there. And I literally get off the airplane and I'm, I met with a friend of mine who said, Hey, uh, I'm your ride back to the, to the site, which we were in San Francisco headed back to California or had headed down to Monterey. So we climbed in his Ferrari 458 speciality. And he says, uh, you feel like driving? <laughs> Those are great words when you're a car guy. Um, you know, one of the other great things was, uh, I had a client that said, man, I really want you to go test drive this car for me. I said, okay, great. What is, what is it? And it's the Ferrari F40. I love Ferraris, if you can tell. Uh, so, you know, driving the Ferrari F40 over to Laguna Seca for a test drive is not a bad deal. So we really get to have a lot of fun. Um, it is stressful at times. I mean, we were asked by a manufacturer to, to, to drive around five cars for promotional use. And we were going to several events while we were there. And so um there's a uh a, a several of these concept cars that are available out there and we were driving one of them and and you know it's so exciting you get into a multi-million dollar car and you know they give you the keys slash little keypad thing that you push buttons to start the thing and i was driving a koenigsegg at the moment and um i'm all excited i can't wait i'm gonna put my my right foot down and hear the throttle and you pull out and there's nothing but traffic for the next five miles. And you're like, well, I hope it doesn't overheat. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we really get some great experiences. Um, I've driven and ridden in some of the most amazing things out there that I, that I've ever seen. And, um, and I was a part of selling some, uh, our most valuable car was a 28, 1928 Mercedes uh, S type that we sold for just over $5 million. And a good friend of mine bought that car at our auction. So, uh, so part of my job is to assist bidders throughout the process. So, um, I'm I'm somebody they call a ringman. So I'm I'm actually in the audience for a great bit bit of the auction when I'm not on the phone with bidders, and um, and I'm in the auction with our with our customers, and and I'm standing next to them, and we're talking through the process as the car is up there for sale, and that's always fun when the guy looks at you and says, you know bid it up to $4 million. And, and, you know, it's, it's just a thrill because in that moment, you're, uh, you're part of the action. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. The audience loves it. It's exciting. Uh, and people get excited about, you know, everything from, you know, a, a little Fiat that sold for $5,000 to the Mercedes that sells for five and a half. So uh, uh, it's really, there's something there for almost everybody. There's always a deal to be had at an auction. It may not be the deal you necessarily want, but there's always a deal to be made. Yeah, uh, it's just such an exciting environment. You know, you you meet some really interesting people. We have celebrities. We had Tom Tom Hanks brought three of his vehicles to our auction, and he visited with us for a little while and got to got to hang out with him a bit. Um, and then uh, you know we have 
the wealthiest of the wealthy flying off of their super yachts and their Sikorsky helicopters and landing in our, our paddock area to, to come view cars after everybody's left. And you just never know. So uh, what would your words of encouragement be for those here in the Mid-South in terms of, you know, if they have a classic car or a car that they want to sell? And then obviously on the other end, if they're looking to uh, get into cars as an investment opportunity, or maybe they're a collector already, what would your words of encouragement be for those here in the Mid-South, in Nashville, across Tennessee, kind of here locally, um, to, to just be more in the game of, I look at these as, as all really powerful investment opportunities, but, but in this game of classic and exotic cars. Oh, absolutely. And, and, you know, what we've seen of recent, uh, of recent years really is that the car market is alive and well, uh, where a lot of people were feeling like, like things were headed to a really bad place. Um, uh, you know, the world has changed. And with that, so did cars. You can go to any new car dealership right now. There's nothing out there. It's kind of the same thing in the classic and collectible car market um, where people are searching for inventory. If you're, if you're somebody here in Memphis or Nashville or anywhere in between, and you've got a car that you'd like to sell, it can be a daunting task. When you've got a collectible car where you know, everybody wants to get the most possible for their vehicle, um, you know, maybe it's something you inherited from mom or dad. I deal with a lot of widows. Um, that's probably 90% of what I get as far as phone calls go are people that are, that are looking for someone to help their mom or their aunt or their next door neighbor who's lost their spouse. And now they've got this collection of cars and they never talked about what to do with it. So I have two words of wisdom for that. One, make a plan for your cars. If you have one, if you have one that's you know, a 1987 Corvette, make a plan for it. Tell everybody what you want to do with it. Uh, if you've got 150 cars, dear God, make a plan, put it in, put it in writing, put it in your will. This is what my instructions are. Uh, I hold currently three powers of attorney over, over, uh, collections that in the event that someone passes away, I have clear cut instructions. So does the spouse. So do the children. I'm to go retrieve the cars and sell them at auction, no reserve, and they're to receive the money period. And so, you know, those are things that we do on a regular basis and we counsel people through the process sometimes. Uh, Miss Spain was, a, was an example of just that. She was a widow, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to get out of this hole. And we made a plan. We executed the plan really well. And at the end of the day, she was thrilled to death and she thanks me on a regular basis. So, um, so I, I tell people all the time, make a plan. But the, the, the long and short of it is if you're a local person and you've got a, a car of, of really any collectability, um, give me a call, talk to me because the car world, although it seems massive, it's really not. Um, you know, I, when you go to these events and you meet the same people at all the same stuff, like all of a sudden the world shrinks really, really closely. Um, you know, people all think that Jay Leno is like the greatest car guy ever. And what you find out is that Jay actually gets a lot of his information from five other guys that I, that I spend a lot of time with. So, um, you know, there's, it's, it's funny how small the world gets in this, in this particular area, but, um, but you know, it's, it, I'm very accessible and, and always here to help anybody who's, who's interested. So, um, so give me a call, send me an email. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great time to be selling cars. Absolutely. It is not a great time to be buying. So, you know, be patient unless you just absolutely have to have it. And if you have to have it, please come to a bottom sale because we can find the other car. There you go. We'll Thanks. wrap up. The last question is the easy one. You kind of led right into it, but contact information. So website, your email, where do we go to reach out to you and connect in and obviously learn more about bottoms. Bonham's uh, website is B-O-N-H-A-M-S, Bonhams, uh, com is an easy way to find us. And then uh, my email is Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Mancuso, M-A-N-C-U-S-O, at Bonhams.com. And then uh, I'm always accessible on a phone, which is 901-502-4265. Well, Stephen, greatly appreciate all you do. Appreciate you coming on the show, buddy. Hey, man, thank you.